six days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who, as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the wearied, he provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part, I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me. They curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if this is his friend. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Many dogs have surrounded me, a band of the wicked beset me. They tear holes in my hands and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I will tell of your name to my brethren and praise you where they are assembled. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All sons of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, Israel's sons. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, and became as men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names so that all beings in the heavens, on earth, and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus, and every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Praise to you, Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put to him this question, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's complete amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now, there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. Now, as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. But in that case, Pilate said to them, what am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. Why, he asked, what harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus to be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and collected the whole cohort round him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak and having twisted some thorns into a crown, they put this on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him, they knelt to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. When they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him, it read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their, hand, their heads and said, so you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days? Then save yourself. If you are God's son, come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way. He saved others, they said. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He put his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, 
Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood there heard this, they said, the man is calling on Elijah, and one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar and put it on a reed, giving it to him to drink. Wait, said the rest of them, to, and see if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus, again crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with the others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, and they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In this account of the Passion by St. Matthew this year, my dear friends, we see various titles for Jesus. The Synoptics and St. John, all four Gospels, are in large agreement about the Passion and the Death of the Lord because they form the oldest part of what we know about Jesus and the oldest part of the message. And we see again and again in Matthew's version of this the titles of Jesus being used by different people. We see him being mocked by being called the Son of God. We see Pilate asking him if he is the King of the Jews. We even see the Roman officer at the end calling him a son of God. One of the strange things is that the name for Barabbas, the thief who was released instead of Jesus, his name also means son of the father. And yet here is another title, ironically, that we see near Jesus, that the son of the father, Jesus Christ, goes to the cross. Well, someone merely named son of the father is released. There is something interesting for us to think about and ironic for us to think about here. But we see this title of Son of the Father, Son of God, as something that becomes clearer and clearer as this goes on. Why would the early Christians have kept this story so close to their hearts if they did not sincerely believe that we are witnessing something unique? We are witnessing Jesus, the Son of God, going to his death in accordance with the Father's will. It's part of the oldest stratum of Christianity. This is the message that St. Paul stood up and proclaimed to the complete amazement of everyone round about him after his conversion. Jesus is the Son of God. This is the great message of today's passage and of the whole of Holy Week that Jesus has been sent to us as the Son of God to die and to rise, that we might live. God bless you all and keep each other safe. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. 
at the start of Holy Week, we welcome the Lord triumphantly into our hearts. Let us place all our intentions before Him. For church and government leaders throughout the world, that the Lord will grant them discernment to see and act wisely for the greater good of all people in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our health care and essential staff, that the Lord will bless them and give them health, courage, and strength to carry out their tasks on behalf of the wider community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the sick, that the Lord will look kindly upon them, and if it is His will, that He will heal them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are anxious and worried at this time, that the Lord will be close to them and give them His comfort. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the faithful departed and for all those who have died recently, that the Lord will give them rest from their labors. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For ourselves, that inspired by the Lord's passion and death, we too will embrace God's will for us with childlike trust, love, and humility. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pause for a moment to add our own special prayers in silence. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty ever-living God, today your Son went willingly to Jerusalem and to his Passion in fulfillment of your will. Teach us to know your will for us, and to embrace lovingly, as Christ did, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that may we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Andrew and St. Margaret, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Father, if this chalice cannot pass without my drinking it, your will be done. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Ever permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>